Well, I've got this sanded up to 400. And uh, now I've got to drill the holes. I may, I tell you what, I'm real, my next step is to drill the holes and then after that uh, to heat treat and temper this. But I don't have the pins, the eighth inch pins that I want to use. I'll have them late this afternoon. So I won't be able to drill this until I get the pins. And the reason is I have to make absolutely certain that I'm using the right size drill for the pins. Well, I'm really happy with how them plunge lines come out. I was all set to discard this or use it as another experimental knife when I said, I think I'll try the file on this. And uh, they come out nice. I'm real happy with that. I didn't discover that method or nothing like that. It's nothing I thought of, but it's uh, something I remembered uh, somebody else doing on a video. Yeah, once you watch a video, that's it. You know all. I can't wait to dunk this in acid. So, uh, got to drill it. Heat treat. Temper. Sand it back to 400 and then up to 600. And then we do the acid. Oh, and, uh, uh, I wouldn't want to tell you that part because I might give away who it's for. <laughs> I need to talk to him, make sure that guy doesn't watch my videos, because I'd like to show you what I'm going to do to the sheath, and I'll let you know that I can do that for other people. So, before I say another word, I'm going to send him a text right now. Would you like to know how I get my holes, my pinholes lined out, uh, so evenly spaced? I'll tell you. What I do is draw out or just color it in where I want my handles to go. That's about, you know, it might be a little more, a little less than that. But I put the first, hold on. For some reason, this is not bright. All right, there we go. I put my first line and my last line where uh, I want them to be without measuring. Now I measure where I want the holes to go, but I know where I want the first, I know where I want the first pin to end up on the handle, and I know how far from the end I want the last pin to be on the handle. So I scribe a line where I want the pins to go vertically, and then I take my calipers and I measure how wide the handle is from here to here. I divide that in half and I mark a line in the middle of it and then I take my, my punch and I punch that. If you look close, you can see where I've got my X. And then I do the same thing to the last. And then I take my calipers and I measure from this hole Hold on one second. From this hole to this hole, and I divide that by two, and then I scribe like that, and then I come back here and I scribe like that, just to make sure that I didn't add wrong and the lines add up. And then I put the uh, my vertical scribe line there. And then I hit that with my punch, and now I go drill the holes. Right, I am at the point. Oh, yes. Well, uh, I still did. I texted the guy, but I didn't get an answer. He, he has a job, if you call it that. Uh, anyway, uh, he'll answer me, and if he doesn't answer me, I'll move on to something else till he does, because uh, I don't want to talk about anything more until I find out if the person this is going to subscribes to my channel or not or watches my videos so all right that's as far as i got so far i i am going to go ahead and drill the holes with an eighth inch bit 
uh, if I get the uh, uh, pins and they're slightly oversized, I'll just move up to the next size bit. Well, I, I found enough eighth inch pin laying around that I was able to uh, make two pins, and that's what I need is uh, pins to hold this together while I'm working on it. So that's what lace wood will look like. And uh, now, let's see. I have shaped the nose. Now I need to put the handles in my vise and sand the very ends of these and put true oil on them. But in the meantime, uh, in the meantime, I'm thinking about making, I haven't made this knife yet. It's a new knife. Uh, this came from my hand, out of my brain. I drew it out on paper and I'm calling it uh, Cato. I don't have a sheath made for it, but uh, I think I'm gonna do this. It's gonna leave a lot of waste, but uh, I may, Actually, if I were to do it on this one, I could still get two dinner skinners out of this. I think I'm gonna do that. So, here's that little crack that I wanna avoid. Can I, no, I can't avoid that. So, uh, I'll figure it out, but uh, I am going to cut two dinner skitters out of this, and then I'm going to make this knife. It's called Cato, and uh, my wife keeps sending me messages as I'm talking. She's sitting up there by herself, so that's what that's what her message was. She said, "I'm sitting up here by myself." <laughs> all right, I got to go have coffee. So, all right, when we get back, I'm going to start uh, working on the handles. Okay, this is my leather shop. And uh, even with this light, which I now have a 100 watt LED bulb in there, this light, which is fluorescent, and I really don't care for fluorescent, this light, LED, the windows, it's still not bright enough right here where I work. Because uh, I sit here and my big fat head blocks the light from getting here, so it's dark back here. So I bought a lamp that is 2200 lumens and it's called a craft lamp so uh four levels of brightness demo blah, blah 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 stays in place okay let me get it out of here and uh get it hooked up and we'll see just how bright it is three days later the fat guy is still on packaging Jeez, they were serious about plastic wrap. Almost there. Another two days, I'll have this unpackaged. Well, I got to tell you, it was it it was well packaged, and uh, it is it appears to be really well built. Let me make sure this is made in China. And let's see, where's it made? Where's it made? Made in China, of course. Well, I'll tell you, it's uh, well built. All right, here we go. Oh my goodness. Yes. And then you can move it down. Oh yeah, man, that is gonna make a huge difference. Yes, 2200 lumens. That will work. Okay, if uh, if I like this in a uh, you know, month or a week, uh, I will leave an Amazon link because that's where I got it. And, uh, you know, I was talking to a friend of mine the other day about reviewing products. And uh, I've made up my mind. Uh, actually, I've made up my mind a long time ago, and I've mentioned it more than once that I no longer review products that I didn't pay uh, pay for, that I didn't buy myself for my own use, uh, and uh, that's my, my policy and it's going to be that policy for forever if I don't pay for it uh, I'm not going to be reviewing it 
Although that's not true. I just did a little mini review on that knife sharpener that Nick Brown sent me, but that is, uh, actually I haven't done a review, but I have mentioned it a lot. But I'll tell you, that deserves a, a real review. Uh, that is an amazing sharpener. This is an amazingly bright lamp. This, all my problems are solved. And here's the reason I didn't go with uh, ceiling lights. There's barely enough room in here between the end of the fan blades and the wall. So I would have to put them on the ceiling behind the fan blades. I do not want to do away with a ceiling fan because it gets hot back here. I do have an air conditioner, but if I don't have to run it, I don't. And uh, so I don't want the lights on the ceiling behind the blades. You know, all that flashing to give me a seizure. So anyway, uh, that's a good light. And we'll see uh, we'll see how, how it does in a couple of weeks if I like it. It seems to be uh, very well made. It, all the adjustment points are uh, way better quality than you typically see on these. Here's an example. Uh, this is cheap crap and it's built like that who knows how long it'll last and it's uh, way different than these joints here yeah it's much better built than i expected okay uh i'm not going to go on and on about it or have i already now i'm going to heat treat that knife i was working on well the warp does not appear to have come back Which is a good thing. All right, I'm fixing to go stick this in the oven, clean it up first, put it in the oven. All right, it does have a bit of a warp, but uh. I can get that out. Not bad, not bad. Yep, I can get that out, no problem. All right, and I went ahead and made it out of the, uh, there was a lot of waste, but it's the thickest part of the steel. It's 3 sixteenths. That's gonna be a big, thick knife. This is just a little over an eighth inch. So uh, I'm only going to get, what am I going to get, three dinner skinners out of this? Maybe. We'll see. I'm not too concerned about it. I gave 160 bucks for this billet of Damascus. So I am going to ask a little more for these knives. Not the one I'm making now. That's for uh, somebody who's already bought a knife, and he's been real good to me. As a matter of fact, that titanium right there he sent to me so he's getting the uh the brother-in-law price but uh this and whatever i make out of this i'm gonna have to add a few more dollars on because it is damascus but this will be the first one of these i've made i don't even have a sheath pattern i'll have to make a new pattern for this but i like this and i'm gonna make this uh as often as i make my nest milk and my swamp rat because uh it is a good feeling knife Feel feels good in the hand and I may put some jimping back here I don't know this is Damascus I may not we'll see as it comes along but uh, I'll bring you with me and uh, if you're interested in this if you contact me before I get to the wood you can have your choice of wood and uh, leather dye and uh, actually I only have one style of pins and they're mosaic so but uh, I'm getting to that 